Alright guys, welcome back for part 3 of the TLR-8T 4.0 Truggy Build Series. That's right. For those of you that have been following along, you can see right here, I've already assembled the front end of the truck, with the front differential, the center of the truck with the center differential, and so far I went with a 50,000 weight in the front differential, a 100,000 weight in the center, and now we're up to part D1, which is the rear differential. And I'm going to be going with a 50,000 weight in that as well. So we're going with a 50, 150 setup. And you can see I have all the parts from the D bag set up on my Cal RC mats right here. And I'm ready to start building the rear differential. Okay, guys, finish step D1 and D2 and halfway through step D3 just wanted to share with you before I join the ring gear to the diff cup I have installed 50,000 weight for the rear differential the kit does supply you with 7,000 weight and they suggest that you use 7,000 in the front and rear and 10,000 in the center so I will say it once again I'm using 50,000 weight in the front and rear and 100,000 weight in the center so I've let this sit for about 10 minutes, not that many air bubbles. The kit does suggest that you fill it just above the planetary gear line, which I have done. I've let it sit. I've installed my gasket onto the ring gear and I'm ready to join the ring gear to the diff cup assembly. So let's finish up step D3. Okay guys, just finished up step number D3, have the rear differential fully assembled so now we're going to move on to step number d4 now i've gone over this step thoroughly and i have heard from a few friends of mine that they had some issues with some binding on this rear differential assembly and uh, to be totally honest some of these directions are a little confusing so like i said you always want to study all your steps very thoroughly before you move on to the next step you want to check all your parts and everything and make sure you have all the necessary parts out and as you can see this is where the differential assembly is going to be put inside the diff housing so you want to follow these steps you're going to put your bevel gear through the front of the diff housing with your spacer your bearings and the outdrive cup will be attached but this is where it gets a little confusing there is a bearing carrier here that is not installed on the front differential. For whatever reason, it's only installed on the rear differential. And they have these bearing cups right here that will fit inside the diff housing. But this is where it gets a little confusing. Now, as you can see, I have six shims here, three different sizes. And right here, it says the 8T 4.0 kit comes with 2.25 millimeter shims on the left side bearing insert which i would assume that that means you would install 2.25 millimeter shims on the left side bearing insert and 1.25 millimeter shim as well as 110.10 millimeter shim on the right side bearing so 
In actuality, that would mean that you should get three of the 0.25 millimeter shims, but they only give you two. So I would say that these are the two 0.25 millimeters. These are two of the 0 0.10 millimeters, and I'm going to say that these are half the thickness. These are less than the thickness of a hair, and they throw these in as well. So to me, it doesn't really make any sense what they're talking about right here. I'm going to use my best judgment. I don't know if it's going to work. I guess we'll find out once I join these together. Uh, the directions here are very vague, and I'll, to be totally honest, some of them don't even make any sense. <laughs> So I'm going to use my best judgment here. Uh, the only thing is that once you put these bearing inserts onto the bearing, they're very difficult to get off. I test fit one of these already and it was rather hard to pull off the bearing right here, right off the flange. But I'm going to use my best judgment here. We'll see how it all fits. Hopefully this helps you guys. Alright guys, I'm back. I wanted to share this bit of information with you because it was... A little bit frustrating to get this to fit properly and I think I finally have it right now although the gear mesh is very tight but I think that they want you to have a very tight gear mesh because as you drive the vehicle it will break in but after some trial and error and I think I finally figured it out what they're saying here makes absolutely no sense at all uh, it says to install 2.25 millimeter shims on the left side and one 25 millimeter shim on the right side as well as one 10 millimeter shim on the right side. That makes no sense because they only give you two 0.25 millimeter shims and what they're saying here it would require you to have three 0.25 millimeter shims. So they don't. What they actually supply you with is two. 0.25 millimeter shims and four of the 0 0.10 millimeter shims. So that made no sense. And in my eyes, the left side of the vehicle would be this side here. Because uh, if you're facing it, if you were in the driver's seat, that would be the left side of the vehicle. So I installed the 2.25 millimeter shims on this side and I was having nothing but binding issues and I couldn't even get the bearing insert to fit inside this housing properly. So I removed this and I put the 2.25 millimeter shims on the right side, or I guess that would be considered to them the left side if you're facing the front of the vehicle. So they should have been a little bit more specific. And I put two of the 0 0.10 millimeter on this side. So if you're looking at it this way, this would be facing the rear looking you know this is the rear of the vehicle that would be the front so on my right I put the 2.25 millimeter shims on the right side and I put the two thinner 0 0.10 millimeter on the left side so I did opposite of what they said and although it is still a tight gear mesh it's a lot better than it was and it actually fits into the diff housing a lot better. This wouldn't even bottom out here. So I did test fit everything, although I haven't applied grease to the ring gear just yet. Uh, this is the grease that I use. I don't use the supplied black grease on this step. I work in the power equipment industry and I'm a small engine mechanic. And this is made by the Steel Corporation. You might know some of their power equipment. And this grease is used on hedge trimmer gear cases and it has a very strong webbing feature to it. So anytime I need, there is need to apply grease to the ring gear and bevel gear inside a diff case, I always use this grease. As you can see, I barely have that much left. I have to get a little bit more. So that's what I will be installing on here and I'll show you how well this grease works and how well it webs. But I wanted to get make I wanted to make sure that all the fitment was proper before I started greasing everything. So it looks like it is going to be a tight fit. It is going to be a little crunchy, but from what I hear, that's normal. But I think I finally got it all worked out, and hopefully this can help any of you out there that had the same issue as me. So here's an example of the grease. I just wanted to show you. I got a lot pumped in there 
only because this gear mesh is so tight that I wanted to make sure that it's well protected. But you know, this, this grease has a very strong webbing feature to it. And it's kind of hard to see here on camera, but you can see how well it sticks to the gears. And I think it will protect this very well. Um, it doesn't get whipped around that much. It doesn't lose contact with the gears. I'm going to put a little bit more in there just to make sure. And it does have some waterproofing features as well. So I'm very happy about that, you know, because they do suggest that you put a ring of black grease around the around the case right here so that dust and debris will not enter into the diff case so I will be using this applied black grease to go around the ring here to seal the differential case but as far as the ring gear and bevel gear goes I always use this grease and it's always worked really well for me so hopefully it does a good job on this application as well so let's finish up step D4 get the diff case all sealed up and ready to go and let's move on to D5 and start building some drive shafts and a arms okay halfway through step number D5 just wanted to show you have the drive shafts all connected to the CV axles have the black grease installed inside these CV boots with the boot retainers on there about to install them into the rear axle carriers as you can see I have my bearings installed I do put uh, just a tiny little bit of grease inside this cavity right here just so that the axles have something to lubricate them a little bit inside the bearings so I'm going to get that all connected um, once you get your axles through your axle carriers you're going to connect your 17 millimeter hubs with your pin and then the grub screws will go into the end of the axles to keep your pins in place inside the hub so let me get that all completed and then I'll show you what it looks like okay D5 is been completed as you can see I have the axles installed into the rear axle carriers I have my grub screw tightened with some thread lock on the inside of the axle and I just wanted to point out that this Technoir C tool works great on the 17 millimeter hubs to hold them in place while you tighten the grub screw on the inside as you can see right there and also another quality feature which I love is the hub nuts for the for the hubs have they are closed off so that no dirt can enter into here while driving and make that little grub screw extremely hard to get out so that protects the inside of the axle which is very nice as you can see I have it installed over here and that's basically what's going to be tightening your wheels onto your hubs so step number D5 has been completed now it's moving on to the hinge pins getting the hinge pin retainers on you're going to set your angle you're going to be setting your rear toe in and the anti-squat adjustments and basically that's controlled by the inserts the plastic inserts that you will be putting into the hinge pin retainers and then the hinge pin retainers will hold the hinge pin to the a arm and as you can see everything's going to come together quite nicely here so it looks like the next step will be assembling the whole rear a arm hinge pin assembly as you can see right here and then that'll be it for step number d6 so let me get step number d6 completed okay, step number d6 has been completed the rear a arm assembly hinge pin retainers and we're looking at one degree of toe in with the inserts provided uh, there was a little bit of an issue here with the rear hinge pin. The orientation of the plastic insert was incorrect. This, if you put install it with this direction, it would bring the hinge pin a little bit higher. And I wasn't able to install the A-arm up against the differential housing. So that was a bit of a mistake. So I had to flip that around. But other than that, Everything went together nicely. So you're looking at zero degrees in the rear and one degree in the front, giving it one degree toe in. Install the axle carriers here on the A arm right here with the threaded rod and two nylon 
lock nuts, which I applied some thread lock to just to be on the safe side with the two spacers, as you can see on both sides. So yeah, <clears throat> step D6 has been completed and now we're moving on to step D7, the installation of the sway bar. Step D7, sway bar assembly has been completed. Looking good. Went together just the same as the front sway bar. Okay, let's move forward. Getting to the wing mount assembly. Mounting to the rear shock tower, which I have right here. Very, very nice piece of machined aluminum right here. Looks beautiful. So let's move on to the wing mount assembly. Okay, step number D8, the wing mount assembly has been completed, as you can see right here. Uh, everything went together very nicely, and it did confirm to me here that they have drilled the holes for the front shock tower for the body mounts too small. So if you go back to my very first part one video, you'll see that the hardware that they supplied for the body mounts will not fit in these holes on the front shock tower because they were slightly too small. Well, the holes for the rear shock tower were supplied with the same, same type of hardware and these holes are the right diameter holes. So that confirmed to me that these holes are going to have to be drilled slightly bigger which is not that big of a deal, but I'm not too happy about that. I would hate to uh, mess up these beautiful machined aluminum shock towers, but I will definitely be handling them with the surgeon's touch. You can guarantee that. And as you can see, I did install the optional wing spacer. So I have those installed and I have mounted them with the two top screws the two bottom screws are left out in this step fast forwarding to step number d9 we are going to be mounting the wing assembly to the diff housing and as you can see the screws will be going through here and mounting to the diff housing so let's move on to step d9 i'll get everything installed including the rear chassis brace and then i'll show you what it looks like okay guys getting closer and closer step d9 has been completed the wing mount assembly has been attached to the diff housing and the a-arms here we installed the chassis brace and everything is looking very nice uh, down the line I actually am going to be getting the aluminum chassis braces for this but for right now I just installed a plastic one but I think that's definitely a must for any basher is an aluminum chassis brace I have that on my other truggies and my other bashers that I have monster trucks always try to get aluminum chassis braces even on my low C5 T so luckily there are aluminum chassis braces available for the 8T 4.0. So I'll be picking that up. Uh, everything is looking good for right now. Still have a little bit of grinding going on here, but I actually hooked up an electric drill to this and drove it a little bit and the grinding goes away. So I'm sure under the power of a nitro engine, there won't be any grinding and everything's going to work itself in very nicely and one other thing i forgot to mention even on the front assembly is that these have some droop screws so this is pretty cool uh it just basically controls the amount of droop that your a-arms have they're installed from the underneath and they are the droop screw which you'll find on a lot of truggies racing platforms so all right, the rear assembly is just about finished. Next step is D10, installing the turnbuckles. As you can see, we have some precise measurements here. They're going to be 76.5 millimeters from rod end to rod end. And from the end of each rod end, it's going to be 140.5 millimeters. And as you can see, there are differences between the two rod ends here. 
The rod ends that go up against the axle carriers are shaped this way, so I do have them separated right over here, as you can see the difference between the two. Uh, we have a different shape. These are shaped like standard rod ends, and then you have this little added brace on there, which is pretty nice. So I'm gonna get to wrenching on that, get those installed. And like I had mentioned on the front assembly, I'm really happy with these turnbuckles here. These turnbuckles or tie rods, whatever you want to say, are very beefy. Uh, they have a five millimeter adjustment on them. And I will be using my TLR turnbuckle wrench here to get them all set up. And my digital calipers, wherever they may be at the moment. <laughs> You always want to get yourself a nice pair of calipers. Okay, finished up step D10, D11, and D12 off camera. Ran into a little bit of an issue. I had a short, short of hardware, I guess you would say. Uh, so I had to make these screws. They're slightly too long. I might have to cut them a little bit shorter, but for right now, I think they'll be okay. I uh, ran short of hardware one way or another. I followed all the steps, so that might be a little bit of a mistake with the kit, but I had some longer hardware. I had to cut slightly shorter and make that work, which was not an issue. They're just slightly too long for my liking, but they might be okay. I don't think they're going to interfere with anything down the line. And other than that, everything went together very well i installed the center rear drive shaft with the rubber boot here and i did install some grease packed some grease inside there it doesn't suggest to do so but i like to do so because it just prevents some wear and tear in that in that area and i've always done that on my fifth scales anywhere there's sealed Dog bones, drive shafts, CVs, I like to install some grease on there. It's just some preventative maintenance. And finally, we are going to attach the rear assembly to the chassis, and that is what it's going to look like when it's finally done. So let me attach it finally to the chassis, and I'll show you guys the finished product, and that will bring us to the end of the Part 3 build series. All right, guys, check it out. Step number D13 is all completed. The rear assembly has been installed, and this is where we're at as of right now. D14. Wow. I would say at this point it's starting to resemble a Truggy a little bit. But yeah, I'm very happy with this right now, guys. Definitely... A beautiful looking vehicle right now and I can see the potential we're getting close looks very very nice very very nice I'm really liking how everything is coming together really looks beautiful here let me uh, put it flat for you check it out The 4.0 is not as wide as the 3.0, but I would say it's still got a pretty wide track on it. And if we uh, put some offset wheels and tires on here, it's going to definitely widen it out. But as of right now, I'm super happy with this, guys. So I want to thank you once again for watching this build series. I'm super excited for this. I'm very excited to start off the new year with this awesome build so thank you for watching part three of the tlr 8t 4.0 nitro truggy build series and it looks like the next step will be moving on to assembling the shocks so stay tuned for part four but for right now i hope you guys are all making it happen in your rc worlds out there and for now this is chris the everyday rc guy and TLR Land saying, thanks for watching.